What is up, everybody? How you doing? Uh, welcome to No Avail Mystery Podcast. And we talk about the mysterious and the crazy, and the crazy and the mysterious. That is right. Um, this is going to be a pretty fun. I, have you guys ever heard of the monster? Or, no, let me ask you this. Have you ever seen the movie Predator? There we go. Um, many say that that is not just a movie. In fact, many say that they've seen this guy. I say guy like, you know. Um, and have seen the reports of this for hundreds, thousands of years. There's even reports on, um, I'm not sure how they portray this onto a uh, <laughs> cave wall, but. But they do. Um, it's actually pretty uh, crazy. Now, there's many different reports, but uh, it's pretty interesting. Um, and of course, it's always people camping that run into this. Uh, um, hang on. I'm trying to find. Of course, I've heard about them in, like, uh, national parks and stuff like that. But this is, uh... I mean, I think I'm, I'm even if photos even can really um, imagine it, but... Yeah, no, uh, it's actually pretty weird. Um, anybody who's ever seen it, or seen, especially if anybody's ever ran into this particular monster thing, let me know, because I, uh, find it. <laughs> I've got a bunch of stories, so I'm trying to pull them up here. I've had, there's actually people that, let's see, I've got, uh, well, <laughs> let's start going through some of these. Okay, here we go. Um, this one from Chil Chihuahua. Another story about my dad, he told us this one a lot. When he was a kid, he'd ride his bike on the gravel road about two kilometers to get, a, to, get to school. He lived in the country, and this was the mid-50s. He, he said he was riding his bike home when a, uh, when a short distance ahead, he saw a really tall, hairy monkey walk out of the trees and cross the road. He thought a, he thought a gorilla or something escaped from the zoo because... That's the only thing he could think of made any sense. Well, that's not the one. I got that one. I got that one mixed up with another one. Let me see here. Um, what kind of thing? Please, yeah. A lot of these people. Okay. This one from Bushido Rockabilly. He says, I believe you. The property I grew up on. Is super active with all kinds of different things. My grandma always told us about told us that 
if you don't acknowledge them and leave them alone, when they will, uh, when when they, then they will always leave you alone. Okay. I had a friend li- living with me in the in my early twenties, and he liked to sit out of uh, his car and chain smoke while he talked to his girlfriend in another state. He explained seeing something similar walk past his car one night. Came in super freaked out, grabbed everything he could fit in his uh, in his and his sister's cars, and moved out that night. All I could offer him was uh, my once the advice from my grandma gave us of uh, growing up. Felt bad because he just paid rent. So when I offered to give it back, he was like, "No, nah, man, that's cool. Keep it. I'm never going back there again." I still see him around here and there and there. And he brings it up when he get when we get on the subject of the creepiest stories of paranormal stuff. Personally, I've not seen anything like that, but I've seen other things here firsthand. And I've had other guest people have visual auditory experiences too as well. So yeah, I believe you. Edit okay, if to make it abundantly clear how bad the he was freaked out by this thing, he called his sister to bring a floodlight. And loaded his car with his AR strapped on. He left a bunch of shit in here and just split. Man. It's like on the movie Predator. <laughs> oh, just like... oh, All right. This one's from Binana94. That experience sounds really creepy and definitely reminds me of a missing 411 case and other accounts of people feeling like they were being hunted in National Park. There are so many stories of one person walking away with, from the crowd, even just mo- momentarily, and then disappearing forever. It almost sounds like something was luring her friend up uh, front in hopes that she would walk away from the guys. In which case you may never hear, uh, have heard from again. This is a great reminder to avoid going deep into the woods alone. We often subscri- uh, subscribe to the myth that we are supposed to be able to rough it in the woods alone. But that's not really just uh, all true. Some people like doing that, but, th- uh, but throughout history humans have traveled in groups. Even, in, even if you don't believe in any paranormal or... High strangeness phenomena. Humans are followed by predator animals way more than we realize, and going alone is an invitation to be hunted. I was gonna stack. I was gonna mention the hunted 411. This is almost exactly like the story of an older woman who was hunting in a small patch of woods in her property. She described the exact same situation, including seeing a transparent shape move through the woods. She even described the bugs and animals going completely quiet when the creature was near her. I've heard this same story. Um, Here's another one from Sunflowers on Mars. You're not crazy. I believe what you saw. I haven't seen anything or heard any human cries. The last time I went hiking in the SB Mountains, I turned a bend on the trail and felt a shift. It went quiet all of a sudden. No birds, no flowing creek, no leaves in the wind. Could no longer hear the other people up ahead and behind me. Like I could hear, but like everything alive went silent, and I could only hear the crunch under my boot. The air felt off. I swear I kept hearing go away over and over in my mind. I got uneasy and anxious and kept scanning all around me while standing in the same spot. By a tree that looked like a burn from the like it was burned from the inside out. When I stepped away and went back the way I came, it's like everything shifted back to normal. I could hear the birds, water, and trees again. Another hiker went by. It's just so weird. I haven't been back over there since. Hmm. Well, <laughs> it's from another uh, hiker. Okay, so I have had one experience in my life that makes me sure that there is something beyond. It was completely unexplainable, and I for sure saw it. I was laying in bed watching TV, and it was like the outline of a person walked right in front of the TV, almost like 
Predator came camo, or the mirage caused by uh, by caused by head, just like you described. But the best way I can describe it, I guess, is uh, it was like the air was slightly different color in the shape of a person, and they walked in front of the TV. As soon as I saw it, I jumped out of my skin, and it was so shocking. I used to, uh, I used to also hear voices sometimes when I was alone in the house calling my name, and it sounded like a woman, almost like my mom. So yeah, I don't think you're crazy, huh? Okay. Uh, this one from No Particular Six One One Six. So I've done a bunch of reading about paranormal phenomena, and that's actually very common for people to either hear a woman calling for help or a baby crying just before something paranormal. Weird as hell happens. It's theorized that it's an attempt to lure people away, which would play into the whole missing 411 phenomena. As, it, as to why it would do that, well, there are no bunch of theories depending on what you are reading. General consensus is that there is something about paranormal phenomena that is programmed to limit the amount of experiencers at, expe yeah, at, at any given time. Huh. Why would it do this? Again, depends on who's asking and what text you're reading. The Trickster and the Paranormal by George Hansen is a fantastic book that looks at paranormal experiences from the angle of the tick trickster archetype. And is based in a lot of anthropological analysis. The luring of folks away from groups trails is very common to folklore surrounding the trickster archetype. Highly recommend reading if you like playing with these types of thought experiment. Regardless, what your friend experienced with the voice is a very well documented occurrence in these strange events. Glad everyone made it home safe. That is weird. All right. This one from Sudden Body Builder. Your description of the cloaked being made me think of a missing 411, the hunted. Uh, there's a link. Uh, Dan Maccabee described as her encounter when she went on a hunting trip and took a photo of it without noticing it at first at all. Then there was another story that made me remember of a similar case, HTTPS, dot, 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 dot. U2 is in TU dot B E backslash Y H O H capital C capital W capital L capital J capital Q lowercase L O Mark Barton from the channel The Trail to Bigfoot. He talked about encountering one of these cloaked beings and it shocked him so much he refuses to go back to the forest of any forest uh, for that matter at all. I still find this all crazy, but I hope. These aren't real, or else things uh, are starting to really terrify me. Oh, yeah. Well. All right. This one from Wolf Dream. I 100% believe you. My husband and I also experienced something invisible and threatening that may have mimicked human voices while in the Smoky Mountain. It was a bit different than your experience, but there were similarities. My husband thinks if it was Bigfoot, well, I think it was some kind of nat nature spirit, uh, elemental legion, or something like that. Um, on our honeymoon in Pigeon Forge, Tennessee, my husband and I had something banging on the support post under the cabin every night. We stayed in Bluff Mountain. There were a bunch of weird paranormal type occurrences the entire week we were there, but I made a a post about it. on the last morning of the uh, of our stay we were awoken by something banging on our roof so hard that the mirror and pictures on the wall were shaking it sounded heavy with a metallic tone to it like who like hooves or a giant hammer is what we agreed it sounded the most like uh, similar to it was coming from directly above our hair bed here we laid in bed for a while, talking about what the hell it could be. It was 8 a.m. The sun was already bright. Um, 
So we thought maybe the, the rental company screwed up and sent someone to work on the roof before we actually checked out. Odd. When my husband started to get out of bed, the pounding stopped abruptly, and, and the scariest, loudest scraping sound from, came from up there. I whispered, was that claws? Even though I whispered it, I swear it was like it heard me, because immediately the scraping sounded again, but much slower and louder this time, like I was screwing with it, like it was screwing with us. Then the banging started back up, even louder and faster than before. I was terrified. My husband grabbed his firearm from the nightstand and ran to the door. It was one one room cabin, so it wasn't very far to go. The frenzied banging continued until the second he opened the door. He ran straight outside. There was nothing out there. Nothing. But he swears he heard something land down the hillside of their cabin. It was built into the saw. But what well, was built into and saw the underbrush shake where the sound came from. He says he watched the dead leaves and underbrush rustle as if something bipedal were uh, moving away from us, though. Uh, through it. But there was nothing there. He didn't see any heat waves or anything. But the cabin was built into a hill, so we so he said it landed was probably a fifty foot drop from the roof because of the steep grade of the hill. And that it jumped out rather than uh, he could have believed. Maybe he uh, wasn't close enough to see the slight distortion. Who knows? Uh, also, to get onto the roof wasn't humanly possible without a ladder. Behind the cabin, um, only possible point of access was basically a man-made cliff, thick brush growing right up to the edge with a drainage ditch running along the bottom. It would have been about 8 to 10 feet over and several feet to jump from the bluff to the roof with about a 20-foot drop to the bottom of the ditch below you. The best we could figure was that something would have had to climb one of the trees and jump from there. This would have made the jump closer to 12 or 15 feet over, although it would have at least had a downward trajectory that way. Everything seemed to be getting more impossible by the second, which was which just ratcheted um, up our tear several notches. We started feeling like prey. While we were frantically packing up, we heard a group of young, young sounding like college kids, people out yelling for one of their friends. They sounded very upset and scared. We had heard them partying on the hill the night before, so at the time, all we were thinking was maybe that thing got, got them. Wanting to help, we spent some time getting lost driving on the mountain, looking for their cabin. It was within yelling distance, so we thought it'd be easy to find. We never could find it, though. So we just followed the news for a while, looking for missing persons named Andy or Andrew. When I posted about the experience, someone commented that maybe there was never any kids in the woods at all and that it was simply that thing trying to lure us out into the brush with it. Neither of us had ever considered that. We both almost peed a little just considering it. <laughs> Not sure what the hell that thing was, but I have no doubt that y'all met up with one of them or a close cousin. Laugh out loud. Thanks for sharing your story. I'm going to read it uh, to the hubby. We've uh, both developed a great interest in other accounts of strangers in the woods. It's been surprisingly finding, uh, surprising finding out just how many are out there. Feels good to realize you aren't the only one that ran into something like this. Sorry about the novel. Your book just uh, took me right out, right back to the mountain. Glad you, you all saw it and got away safely. Wow. Pretty crazy. Yeah. Uh, uh, uh. All right. Thanks. It's with the, have you ever heard of the Marfa lights and the entities who followed... Um, in 2016, I went to Marfa, Texas for my honeymoon. I'd heard of the Marfa lights, but I've never seen a video even close to what I saw. 
Natives have, have seen them for hundreds of years before cars, so the theory of it being reflected headlights is null. The, li- the, the line in Men in Black where he talks about swamp gas was originally to explain the Marfa light. To cut a long story short, I didn't buy that we'd seen anything or that we would see anything. We went because there was a film festival and an art show. This is remote. There are signs that, that, that say make sure you buy water and food before 5 p.m. because nothing is open past 5. <laughs> but they also have five, a five-star hotel that is about 200 years old. We went to a nice dinner. Afterwards, I demanded we need to go see the lights. Uh, or, wait, go to see if the, li- oh, if the lights were out. There's a brick slab as, a wa- as the watch area out near where uh, out motel was. Really. Um, we get there and there's a single person, an old man sitting on the brick. He tells me he saw the lights many years ago and never su- never left since. Then in the distance, about, uh, above the mountain range, is a single red blinking light. I immediately write it off as a radio tower light. Old man tells me there's no radio towers out there. Then directly below it, another red light starts pulsating. Then a third until uh, there's three lights in a vertical row pulsating, just like a radio tower. Then they go solid red and slowly start to hover in all directions and fade in and out. At first, staying red, then going dark. Then coming back green, yellow, blue, purple, orange, cycling through the red, the color spectrum. Sometimes slowly, sometimes so quickly it just looked white. There are now three lights of orbs floating and flying around in all directions. The old man says, they're active tonight. Then one of them, like squid, splits into a fourth and fifth ball of light. Now there's five balls of light floating and flying erratically, changing through all colors of the visible spectrum. This went on for two hours. I was I was jaw jaw in the in the shot. I had a camera. I'm a professional cinematographer, and I f- never lifted my camera. I wanted to take every moment. It was uh, like something told me to listen and not document. After about two hours, all uh, all five lights quickly shot into a horizontal line and turned blue. Then they faded away. My wife was not nearly as moved as I was. When we got back into our motel, I demanded I'm walking back out towards the light. She begged me not to. I had to. I walked out the motel, turned off my phone, and was headed for the area I saw the light. All the while, the sky looked like diamond dust. I didn't. I'd never seen so many stars and planets in my life. Shooting stars happened every, uh, every five seconds, but nothing like what I had witnessed with the light. It was cold in the desert, and I was convinced I was probably going to be bitten by a rattlesnake or something creature of the night. So I found a spot and laid down. Not so good way. <laughs> uh, I saw the red that I saw the like like I had never seen before. Something came over to me and told me to pray. Okay. I prayed for the to the skies. Um, if what I just saw was real, and that's really you, please show me more. Show me the truth. Show me what's real. My whole life, I've known there's something more, and I just feel I just got a glimpse of something real. If that was you, please show me. Show me the truth of this, of this world. Take me with you. I'm willing to go. I prayed this way until I fell asleep never seeing the lights again. I woke up freezing, turned my phone on, and had a million messages from my poor wife. I walked back to the motel, and bless her heart, she was still awake at 4 a.m., crying, thinking something had happened to me. I consoled her and pleaded her with her to understand. We went to bed. Around 5 a.m., I awoke, screaming. My wife and I had been sleeping next to one another for almost 10 years, and she said I never woke up screaming. At the edge of the bed, I was standing three tall silhouettes of skinny, long, big-headed entities. As soon as I screamed, they were gone. My wife consoled me, but I immediately felt regret. I told them to take me. I would go, and I flipped out and lost my chance. I've never had multiple experiences praying to the skies and seeing UAP on demand. 
even during daylight. If I pray and truly ask for them to say hello, they'll do more often than, than not. Huh. After reading quite a bit about the, these types of entities, I've learned that they are light beings and dark beings. I believe I saw the light beings with the Marfa light, but I think the darkness intercepted my prayers. I've never felt so much horror and fear seeing those giant linky uh, silhouette. If the beings of light showed up in my motel, maybe I would have been here. Maybe I wouldn't be here today. I would have gone with them. In conclusion, I believe as us, we as humans harness much power that we don't tap into. Our consciousness is more than just a thought. It can move things, shape things, create things. Our minds are more powerful than we want us to know. I grew up in the church, and now I see why they always talk about the power of prayer. I'm a, clin I'm a cynical man by nature, and I try my best to curtail my thoughts toward the positive, and it always makes a difference. Up to you all. That's pretty. That's a pretty good story. Thank you. Um. Let's see, wait. Let me see, where did that go? This is, uh, these are stories about just different cryptids, people who've seen cryptids. Um, what are your stories? Let's find out. Yeah, oh, where was my time at? Okay, okay. Good, I have to take my break. All right. Okay, I've never seen a cryptid, or at least I don't think I have, but I have had an experience. Context, I live in Australia, southern eastern uh, Queensland, to be exact. The area I lived in at the time was a mix between dry and, and uh, arid and dense brushland. At the time, I was 15, and it was 3.30 p.m. I was lying on my trampoline with an earphone in my right ear, with the other out just in case my parents called out to me. It was uh, beginning to get dark, and I was just enjoying the view, looking at the sunset over the grunt gum trees in the distance. To be clear, there are only like four houses in a 3,000 acre range, very isolated. I heard a glutter roar coming from somewhere deep within the trees. I felt chills and the immediate uh, sense someone was watching me. I got the hell up and ran as fast as I could to my house and immediately locked the door. No clue what it was, but whatever it was scared the holy hell out of me. Uh, nope. This one, uh, this one from Samu three three six nine eight. Hey, sounds way too familiar. I used to live in Melbourne, BIC. When I was a teenager, I used to go for long walks in Plenty George Park. I got so familiar with the the forest close to my home that I felt comfortable going out at night and walking there. One night I was out walking as usual. Something out of the snake. Some, oh, something. One night I was out walking as usual. I'm sorry. Looking out for snakes and trying not to think about uh, how depressed I was. Suddenly I heard something very similar to what you described. A really loud, long-lasting, glutteral roar or howl. I'm not exactly uh, sure how to describe it. It freaked the living crap out of me. It sounded way too close to where I was standing for, the, for my liking. Needless to say, I got out of the park as quickly as I could. I kept uh, of trying to, anal uh, to analyze the sound I've heard. Was it a big dog? An escaped zoo animal? I'm not sure. The idea that stuck in my head was that it sounded like a big hell, uh, hellhound. Huh. Like the hound in the hound in the bar... Uh, like the hound and the hound of the Baker's Village. I love you doing? Oh, I don't know. Hellhound, the Baker Villas. 
I'm not sure. Oh, that's what I said. Uh, I'm still not sure what I heard that night. When I read your post, I felt like uh, intrigued. Maybe we are going on to something and there's uh, some sort of Aussie cryptid out there. Hmm. Okay. Well, I'm going to take a short break. But nobody go nowhere. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Uh, don't go anywhere. I'll be right back. I'm right at the bottom of the hour. Don't go anywhere, anywhere. I'll be right, right back. He just thought it was some sort of demon coming for him. His father, also being a believer, you might say superstitious, whatever you want to call it. My grandfather told his father, my great-grandfather, they didn't waste any time. They got in the truck and they left. Before I go, another crazy story for my grandfather. When he was about 18, 19, or 20, it was in the fall and he was tracking this really large buck. He came to this spot in the woods where he had good eyes on it. And as he got ready to make the shot, this large Bigfoot-like creature comes out of nowhere, grabs the buck by the neck, twists and breaks its neck like it was a small bird, virtually effortlessly, then just grabs the buck by the back legs, throws it over its shoulder, and casually walks off. Scared my grandfather pretty badly too. He took off. My grandfather's tribe, the Choctaw people, have a name that they call these Bigfoot creatures, but forgive me, because I can't remember it at the moment, but he knows what he saw. He has also seen them growing up, so he knew what it was. I'll reach out to him and see if I can't get him to document or write down a bunch of his experiences and encounters. I think you would really appreciate them, and if anything, really enjoy them. Thank you for taking the time to read this. Have a wonderful day. I spoke with this witness on January 8th, 2006, for more than 40 minutes. This man and his wife were returning from a trip from Florence, Alabama. They were watching the sun set as they drove along the Trace Parkway in a generally southwestern direction. They had just crossed the Mississippi-Alabama state line and had traveled approximately three to four miles into Mississippi as they approached mile marker 307. The witness said that he saw what initially appeared to be a person jogging along the right side of the road in a southwestern direction. He emphasized that it's fairly common to see joggers along the trace, so he didn't think too much about it at first glance. The witness said that when approaching that mile marker, the road is hilly and there's a slight downhill incline at that point. At the bottom of the hill, the road curves to the right when traveling southwest on the trace. There was a vehicle approaching the opposite direction and was just entering the witness's field of vision as he topped the hill just prior to mile marker 307. The vehicle traveling in the opposite direction had also just topped the hill as well. As both vehicles came into view of each other on tops of their respective hills, the animal appeared to panic both cars traveled down their hills, around the curve, and past each other. The witness slowed to nearly a stop, while the other car appeared to pass by without slowing at all. The animal was initially traveling at a normal speed for a jogger when he first noticed it, but then it suddenly began moving quickly and appeared to be running at about the speed a deer would sprint as both vehicles entered the curve. As it crossed the road from right to left, it lost its balance and tipped, nearly falling down. After catching its balance, it bounded off into the woods. It had its back towards the hem until it turned across the road. The closest he came to it was roughly 25 to 30 yards, and it ran between the two cars and roughly equal distance between the vehicles. He said it was solid black and was even illuminated by the sun, which was still in the sky at this point. He said the entire observation lasted only a matter of seconds, and his full attention was focused on it for roughly two. It happened so quickly that he didn't even have the time to say look to his wife, who was also in the car with him. He thinks the sighting took place with the bounds of Tishomingo State Park. He emphasized that he did not pay much attention to it, until it panicked and began moving very quickly. He got a side profile of it as it crossed. 
He said its head did not look human, and appeared to be a little raised in the back, and appeared to slope towards the front. He described it as very stocky with a muscular build. When it tripped, it swung its arms out to catch its balance. He said the hands appeared to be much larger, proportionally than a human's, and the arms appearing to be longer, proportionally than a normal human arm. While the animal was running along the highway, the arms were up like a human, just like they would be when jogging. The surrounding terrain is steep hills and large boulders. Bear Creek even runs through here. An area adjacent to this location is called the Freedom Hills. It's called that because it was a favorite hiding area for escaped slaves prior to the Civil War. It's very possible a large wild beast might be roaming through this area that resembles that of what they call a Bigfoot. My mother and I had taken my young Doberman to the Honey Island Swamp to let him run and get some exercise. We had driven to the end of the road where the bridge had collapsed and you could not go any further back by car. The area is just a few miles from the Honey Island exit off of Interstate 59 in Mississippi. The road was built up about eight feet from the ground since it flooded back there. The area around the road was swampy, having lots of trees. The ground was covered in leaves since it was fall. We had been there about 10 minutes and my dog had pretty much been staying on the road as he ran around. I went to get something out of the car and when I began walking back to where my mother was on the road, she was looking out into the wooded area at something. She pointed out what appeared to be something dark beside a large cypress tree. We could not make out a head, but it appeared to be gray and black, covered in fur, and was actually a torso. Whatever we were looking at was large. It stood above some bushes, and the top part was behind the branches of the tree. It had to have been well over six feet tall since the bushes were at least three feet tall. It definitely was not another tree because the texture was so different and the big tree next to it looked different. It was approximately 1 p.m. The sun was bright. The light was dappled through the tree cover, but we could see that it was shining off of what appeared to be hair or something with a wiry, hairy texture. It even seemed to shift back and forth as if you were to shift your weight from one leg to another. And if I had to guess, it was probably 50 to 75 feet away from us. We could not get a real good look at it. We did not hear or smell anything, and my dog did not seem to notice anything out of the ordinary. After looking at it for at least two to three minutes, we got very uncomfortable, we decided that we would drive a mile or so up past one of the bridges on the way back to the interstate. We put my dog in the car and drove at least a mile up the road before we stopped again to let my dog back out. We had been there approximately five minutes when we heard footsteps in the woods. We could hear them getting closer. This time, my dog picked up on the sound and became alert. We could hear it. We could hear it stop, then move forward a few steps a couple of times. We couldn't see anything, but my dog was definitely trying to figure out what he was hearing. We got a little scared, so we loaded up again, and this time drove up to where there were some nature trails and a shooting range, probably at least two miles up the road. We got out of the car again, and were not there for two minutes when we heard what sounded like something running through the woods toward us. At that point, my dog got so terrified that he ran back to the car and hit the closed door, just trying to get back in. My mother and I ran to the car. All three of us got out there as fast as we could. We never saw what was making the noise in the woods, but whatever it was was big enough to make a lot of noise, both walking and especially running. After leaving and having major discussion about what had happened, my mother and I got our nerve up to go back to the end of the road later that day. So now it's about 4 p.m. 
and we wanted to see what we had seen earlier, if it was still there. When we got there, we could not find what we had seen before. We saw what we were pretty sure was the big tree, but we did not see what was by it originally, and we were not brave enough to go down into the wooded area for a closer inspection. We basically left with even more questions than we started out with. We never had a clear view of what we saw, but what we heard definitely scared us. Also, before I forget, I once met a girl that told me that her family used to actually camp in the Honey Island Swamp, and that something came up one night while they were sitting around the campfire. She said that her dad and uncle scared it off by shooting guns in the air, but not before one of her family members managed to get a couple of pictures of it. She said they weren't very clear, but that you can definitely tell there was something there. She said that they had sent them to LSU for them to review. I did not know her name. I only met her once. She told me about this at least five years before even my experience took place. I had went and hung a stand on a tree the day before hunting deer in an area north of Sardis Lake on public land. I knew I was the only person in there because the trails hadn't been used for some time. I rode in about two miles and then walked roughly 300 yards to where I had hung my climber. It was just about daybreak. I was 20 or so feet up a pine tree when I heard what sounded like somebody beating a large stick against a tree. A ways away, I spotted some movement in the area. That's where the sound came from. Whatever it was, it was very brown and tall. My Who's up, guys? What the hell? Has anybody see the movie Predator? Well, we're going over stories of a cryptid seen by thousands, hundreds of thousands of people. Um, and they're not old stories. Uh, actually, more of them are recent. Uh, I've asked people, uh, I'm trying to get this guy, he does a lot of like zoology stuff, and uh, I talked to him about, and he didn't come on the show, I did, we're trying to get a good time for it, but uh, he, he's he got a pretty good theory about what it is that uh, people, of why these cryptids are, you know, you hear about these more and more of people running into them. Now, I'm going to tell you one thing. Anybody can say whatever they want. If you have night vision of any kind of goggles or anything, I've got this little camera thing, and it's got night vision, and you point that thing in the sky, there's a lot of stuff moving up in our atmosphere. There's lights that are moving around that are not just, that are not planes. They're not satellites. I don't know what they are, but uh, it's, I'm uh, going to try to see if it's about taking videos with this thing because you can you can take videos of them and there's these lights that just are, it's really it's pretty actually pretty cool but uh I, you know i can't say what it is what it might be but it's pretty weird um let's see now going on to trevor 191 i posted this the other day but i saw a devil monkey or what i think it was was one of my grandma's at my grandma's house it was in the tree about three or four feet tall jumping from tree to tree he lives near some woods that not a lot of people go in i've uh i've only told my my girlfriend because she lives near my grandpa and i was wondered and i wanted this to wanted her to be prepared if she saw one is there that'll be uh that'll be anyone in there um, for sure. Uh, let's see. Let me see. Hold the cryptid iceberg. Okay, let's check this out. 
Wendigo skinwalkers. Those are two extremely different things. Okay, I don't know what that was. Uh, let me see. No, I don't know. Okay, hang on. UFO. Tell me about your first sight. Okay. I had never given the thought of aliens, UFOs, any real consideration, at least until the age of uh, 11. My family and I <laughs> had just finished watching the fourth kind, the biggest coincidence I've ever experienced in my life, and my uncle's ex decided to take the dog for a walk. A minute later, power in the house goes off. She comes in screaming about something in the sky. We all venture outside to see three orange orbs. Best way I can describe them, I, if you know of uh, the Arizona lights of the 90s, those are the best uh, reference. Floating around, making strange maneuvers. Next thing you know, six more come out of nowhere, one by one, each of them zipping their way into our night nice sky. They hovered, floated around for, for about 45 seconds before they took off, uh, took off one by one at what looked like the speed of light. Ten years later, I'm still left wondering what I had actually witnessed. It's the kind of story that people will give you uh, looks for cause. Uh, for cause, they're either thinking you're crazy or full of shit. Either way, with eight different people being there uh, to also confirm the story, two of them being adults, I don't think my imagination was getting the best of me that night. Well, I gotta say, you're probably right. I didn't mean to rhyme. <laughs> <laughs> it was, uh, this thing in this photo looks like an alien to me. <laughs> yeah. Weird. Uh, let's see. Alright, don't think I'm crazy. This one. Okay. Don't think I'm crazy. We saw what I can only describe as the creature from Predator movies. San Bernard. National Forest. This happened on Thursday. Been looking for a place to ask questions and share this experience. I don't know if this sub is the right place, but feel free to pass my story along if you know somewhere better. Alright. Okay, I totally understand if no one believes this, because we are still unsure of what it, what happened. Uh, with a cuss word that I won't say. Um, but we sat down, came to a consensus on the event, and all agreed we witnessed the same thing. Me and my three buddies were hiking Thursday, Friday, in uh, SBNF, various trails, mostly the known ones, and mostly during the day. Friday, we were making our way to Clark's Summit. As we were walking, one by one, we noticed that we were uh, veering off the trail. I asked my friend in front of me why he was going off the trail, and he asked our friend who was in front of him, and the same thing. The friend in front of us, uh, the front in front told us, I can hear a woman talking, you guys. Don't you hear that? We didn't hear anything. We tried to convince her to leave it uh, be because it was already kind of dark and we were close to where we uh, wanted to set up camp on the trail. The friend in front is female and insisted that, sh that what she heard sounded like a female calling for help and that she was sounded really close. So I think she felt inclined to investigate a possible female in distress while we were totally okay with going uh, about our own business. Okay, I get a bit spooked now because she's absolutely serious and we absolutely could not hear whatever it was she was hearing. Here's, what it, here's where it got weird. We only ventured off the trail about 400, 300 to 400 uh, meters. Yet at one point, we were completely lost. We don't have any fancy gear or GPS stuff because we've never needed it. But we've been on this trail enough to know we hadn't gone far. Yet, we couldn't find the trail in any direction after walking about 15 or 20 minutes. I started to feel really weird, kind of dizzy, lightheaded. And when I mentioned this, the other two said they felt weird as well. It was like something had changed the environment around us or moved us somehow to another location. I had no idea which way to go, and now it was fully dark. My female friend said the woman's voice had said, I'm over here, and please help me. 
She said it sounded like she was hurt and crying. So here we are, some, somehow lost. After only walking for about 20 minutes off a large trail because my friend is hearing voices. We decided we want to do it at... Wait, we decided to stop, I'm sorry, walking in any direction because the last thing you want to do at night is even get lost even more. We had two tents and sleeping bags in our packs, so we found a clearing and set up. We figured once the sun was out, we'd easily find our way back to the trail. Before we could even lay down, lay down to rest, I noticed a tree near us was moving as if something was climbing it. It was really dark, and I wear glasses, so I really struggled to see, so I called them over to see it. I thought it was an animal but at first, but it wasn't an animal. It wasn't anything. I could see the outline of what roughly looked like a human shape, but it was transparent, like completely see-through. The best way I can describe it is the, is the way uh, heat waves look on the pavement in the summer. You know, that wavy liquid effect. They saw it too. My male buddy said, what the fuck are they looking at? Are we looking at? When he finally spotted it, they all said the same thing. It was transparent, but still visible due to the foliage around it being displaced and moving as it moved. We all just stood, uh, stood, we all just stood stone, still whispering theories back and forth to what we had thought we were seeing. I thought maybe it was some kind of a lop, uh, optical illusion, but they both immediately jumped in, jumped to aliens, of course. The thing just sat there, perched on a large branch after 50, about 50 feet up. It's like it was watching us watch it. The other oddity is that after staring at this thing for about 10 minutes, we noticed all the normal forest uh, sounds we heard prior had stopped completely. This is what I always hear, too. I mean, the only noise was us talking and the leaves under our feet. The hairs on the, neck, on the back of our necks stood up, and I had goosebumps all over when I realized this, like something was truly wrong. After about 10 minutes of us standing there, whatever this thing was started to climb up the tree even more until we could no longer see it at all. We approached the base of the tree slowly and walked around it in circles with our necks craned up trying to see this thing. It was too dark and the trees were too close for us to see the top. We didn't even hear it jump to another tree so we assumed it was still up there. We were all too spooked, obviously, to camp right underneath this, whatever this thing was. So we gathered our shit and started walking towards the moon. I shit you not, after about five minutes of walking, we were back on the trail. I literally dropped my bag and said, what the fuck, went out loud. We all stood there confused, looking around, trying to confirm what we were seeing. My buddy likes to joke and said, maybe we walked through the, some hallucinogenic spores and all imagined all of that. I highly doubt that. But whatever happened, it seemed uh, kind of, I guess, predatory. Like it seems like something was luring us or trying to confuse us. My friend still thinks we were fucking with her about not hearing the woman she claimed to hear. Well, was it that thing we saw limit, um, imitating a woman? How did we get lost so close to the trail? This was easy. This was easily the weirdest thing I've ever experienced in the wilderness. We still don't have a good theory as to what the, you know, what the, what we saw, and it may not have been an alien, but whatever it was, it was humanoid. And it was 100% transparent. Somehow, and able to climb a really large tree with ease without making much noise. I would love to hear any theories about what this may be or have been. Uh, has anyone else seen anything like this in the woods? Edit. I feel I should mention no drugs were consumed. That sounds exactly like the thing that uh, that we're all trying to talk about, man. Uh, well, I'm going to get some videos, put them on my site, but uh, I am out of time for now, everybody. Um, I hope you enjoyed it. It was kind of a chill night, uh, but... If you haven't checked out my website, uh, NA Mystery Podcast. I'm sorry, NA as in Nancy Apple Mystery Podcast. Uh, yeah, and, uh, and I will see you guys tomorrow. I will be fresh up and awake, and uh, I 
I appreciate everybody. You guys have a wonderful day. And I'm